Okay, welcome everybody here at this uh, live tour from the Stedelijk Museum, Amsterdam. It's really great to be here after two weeks at home. Um, and a very special live tour. We do this now every Friday afternoon at two o'clock, but this is a very special tour because it's also like a sneak preview through the Namju Pike exhibition. Um, we had planned to open this show on Friday the 13th, but due to the whole situation uh, and corona crisis, we couldn't open this exhibition. So now this is really something special that I can take you with me and show you a little bit uh, of the exhibition. My name is Leontine Koelewe, I'm curator here at the Stedelijk Museum. And I'm here together with two of my colleagues from the communications uh, department. And we really keep distance, one and a half meters to, to keep it safe uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm going to take you inside uh, the show, the first room, and we can walk in and uh, have a first look at, uh, at the exhibition. So this is uh, the exhibition uh, Namtune Peak, The Future is Now, and we chose this uh, title because Namtune Peak was really a very visionary artist who was experimenting all the time and trying to find new ways to, to communicate with his audience like we do now at this moment. And we start here in this first room with a work that you might know here from our collection, which is the TV Buddha. The TV Buddha is really an iconic work from the Stedelijk Museum collection. It's a piece from uh, 1974, and we had the chance to, to buy it for our collection in 1978. Uh, it consists of, uh, you can see it, this really funny white television. It's a, a camera and an antique sculpture of a, of a Buddha. And this Buddha is watching himself on the, on the screen, on the television, sitting here all the time and just looking at himself. I don't know what you're doing at the moment, where you are. Maybe you're in Amsterdam at home or somewhere else in the world. Please let us know because, yeah, I'm also really curious to hear more from you. Maybe you have questions for me. You want to know something more about Nam Chung Paik. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the exhibition, but yeah, I can understand that you also have questions for me, and then Femke will like make a sign, let me know. So here, this is the first room uh, of this exhibition, um, and you see here a large photograph of the artist. So it's nice to see how, what he looks like, what he looked like uh, in 1978, when he was here at the Stedelijk uh, Museum. He was at our audiovisual department, and he was like making an installation of the, of the TV Buddha. So trying to set the, the camera in the right place, having the statue here. So you can see that, yeah, he was a really important artist for, uh, for our museum. He has been, he's been, he had the show already in 1977 and then later on already in, uh, in 84. So it's, it's been a long time since he was here with a big overview of his work of about 50, of his whole career, 50 years. And um, we show about 200 objects, some really large installations, some really small objects. And one of the large installations is in the next room. And sometimes it's a little bit noisy, so um, maybe I can stand here for a while, and I also heard from Femke that there's a question. So, yes, someone's wondering why the artist chose Buddha. Hmm. Yes. The the question is like why the artist chose a Buddha, a Buddha statue. Well, Namjoon Paik was really um, very much interested in like Eastern philosophy, Zen Buddhism. He was born in, uh, in, in Korea, in Seoul, and studied in Japan for a long time. And he was very much into uh, Zen Buddhism um, and the whole idea of like meditating in front of a, 
uh, television screen was really interested, interesting for him. So like Zen and Buddhism is something that is, well, you can see in his whole career, in all of his work. So yeah, maybe I hope that's, that's an answer. So in the next room, um, you will see the TV garden. And it's, it's really one of my favorites. It's a, it's a great installation in which he combines like technology, so televisions and nature, life plants, and he has made like a futuristic landscape with it. We can walk into this room and it's, maybe it's a bit noisy. So it's what you see on the, on the monitors is a video called Global Groove. He also saw it as like a future landscape of, of television. And this is a fragment with the living theater, which was an experimental uh, theater group in the 1960s and 70s. And he combines all sorts of different videos, things from television, sometimes commercials from Japanese television. You see um, John Cage, you see dancers. So, and this is, I think, a work which is, looks great on your phone or on your laptop, but it's also really wonderful to experience it yourself. So, it would also be great if you could see it yourself here in the museum. Oh, this is uh, John Cage, and John Cage was a really important uh, person for, uh, for Nam Chumpeg. So we go to the next uh, room, and um, I will. Why don't you take your jacket off? So this is. Um, oh, there's another question. Yes, there's still a new question about yes. the TV garden. Ah, yes. I was wondering what Nam Jung Pai's relationship to John Cage was. Were they friends or? Oh yes, yeah. I I will I will tell a little bit more about John Cage. Uh, soon, because we have like a whole room which is about Nam Chun Paik and John Cage. They met in the late 50s and they were really close friends and um, they had a lot of like talks, discussions about Zen Buddhism and, and Eastern philosophy and Nam Chun Paik was really influenced by John Cage and especially his ideas about like chance music, new music. Um, improvisation and already like in the late 50s early 60s he had like he made a lot of works which were inspired by John Cage like for instance I'm, I'm standing in front of a prepared piano and Nam Chun Pei got the idea to like work on this old piano put little things inside of the piano glue the uh, all different parts together and create some sort of chance music with this prepared piano. And that was really an idea that came from uh, John Cage. So here in this room, we can walk around a little bit. We uh, see a lot of works that have to do with the very first exhibition that Nam Chung Peik made in 1963 in uh, Galerie Parnas in Wuppertal in Germany. And the exhibition was called Exposition of Music, Electronic Television. So maybe if I explain a little bit about like the background of Nam Chung Paik, he was uh, born in, in Seoul in Korea. And then when the Korean War broke out in 1950, he moved to Japan with his parents and he studied uh, musicology. And in the late 50s, he moved to Germany to continue his studies in composition, musical composition. And there in Germany, he met Cage and also Karlheinz Stockhauser, both influenced him a lot. And in his first exhibition, you see these images here. He brought in like objects that were like musical instruments, like the piano, but 
and also instruments that he made, like he did performances with, like for instance the work you see here. He was walking with this little violin and he called it Zen for Walking. And he also wanted the audience in the exhibition to, to play with all these in instruments. So this was a piece called Schallplatten Schaslik, so like a record kebab, you could say. So people were invited to come in and yeah, really play with all the objects that were there. And what was really new was that he also worked with televisions for the first time. So television became really important uh, for Nam Chun Paik, but in this show, 1963, really early on, that was something completely new. Um, so this is like one of the pieces called um, Foot Switch TV. And I'm, I'm working it with my, with my foot. So, so as a visitor then in the exhibition, but also now, you can really like distort the image, transform the image just by yeah, working with the foot switch. So, oh, there's a question. That's Someone's asking, did Pai consider sound just as important as image? Um, yes, I think so. I think so. Like in all of his work, like sound and image were coming together. Like we saw it in the TV garden, but also here. So he, yeah, I, I think that both sound and, and image were equally important. Yeah. Should we go to the next room? Because in the next room, we also see the, um, the relationship that Pike had with uh, John Cage. And we chose a small, like a quote from uh, Nam Chung Paik, and which is also a bit of like an answer, like why did Paik like Cage so much? And he said, I like John Cage because he took seriousness out of serious art. And I think it's a great quote. It really tells a lot about Cage, but also about Paik, that there was also a lot of like humor involved. Everything was really like playful. There was a bit of maybe aggression, but also like a lot of humor in, uh, in the things they, uh, they did. Like for instance, here we have a photograph of a, uh, of a performance Peg did in 1960 in Cologne, and it was called Etude pour Pianoforte, which sounds a bit like serious. But he started to play Chopin, a piece by Chopin on the, on the piano, and then a certain moment he stopped, and he took a pair of scissors, and he went to the audience, and John Cage was sitting there, and he cut his tie in half. And I think that John Cage was like a little bit frightened first, but then he, yeah, he could really see what the funny thing was. He, he could really laugh about it. And he said that it was a, one of the most amusing things he had like experienced. Like after his tie was cut also, there was a lot of shampoo cut, uh, poured on his, uh, on his hair and um, so it, I think it, it tells something about their close relationship. Um, and Nam Chung Paik did a lot of like, performances that were inspired by the idea of like, chants, about improvisation, about um, yeah, emptiness as well, silence, for instance. And he did this piece, also in the early 60s, it was called Zen for Head. And he dipped his head into like a can of, of paint. And with his head, he made this drawing, you can say. So Zen for Head, another Zen-inspired work. Oh, there's a question. Someone's asking if Pai was part of Fluxus. Yes, he was. Yes, yes. Nam Chupek was very important for Fluxus. And we made two uh, rooms with a lot of like Fluxus material. Um, there's really like 
interesting. Maybe I should tell a little bit about fluxes first, because I can imagine that it's not like nobody, no, not everybody knows what, what fluxes was. But fluxes was like a group of international artists, and they worked a lot with like performance, with happenings, with sounds. It was artists, composers, musicians with like very different backgrounds. And their idea about like making music, for instance, had a lot to do with um, giving instructions about very simple things, very simple activities, also including very simple objects into the art world and not necessarily making like physical objects, but just doing things. And one of the things I like a lot from the Fluxus period of, uh, of Nam Chum Paik is an instruction which is called theater for poor man and it's it's just a text and it's here just above the the door and it reads like summon a taxi position yourself inside request a long ride and observe the meter and this is a piece from 1961 and in this room So this was a performance that Nam Chum Paik did for, it was, it's called Serenade for Alison and um, was performed in 1962 in, uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, we go to the next room because I think it's a little bit more quiet there and, um, and then we have another question. Yes, well, it's, it's a mix. It's, yes, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, the question was why we used like older televisions and not these new ones. So, but it's like we use old televisions and new televisions. Uh, some of the monitors we already had uh, for a longer period and we can really use them very well but sometimes we need like very new uh, monitors but with some of the pieces um, Nam Chum Paik was really very precise of what kind of monitor, television monitor was needed like for instance with the TV Buddha he really wanted to have this like um, sphere like this white uh, television, so not another kind of uh, TV. Um, yeah, so it's, we, we have different sorts of, uh, of, of television monitor. This is another room with fluxus material, a lot of like multiples, uh, also printed material, magazines, some documents of performances. And here in the next room, we included a lot of material from Nam Chum Paik's personal uh, life. Maybe it's good to, to say something about his life at this moment. He was born in 1932 in, uh, in Seoul, and he died in 2006. And the objects here in this vitrine give an idea of like stuff that he had in his studio in the early 2000s and just before he died it's like a combination of toys like these little robots that you see uh, old passports some some personal things here's a little like image uh, where you can see Peik with his uh, wife Kubota who was also an important video artist uh, a Casio, like keyboard, some playing cards, an old umatic tape. So all sorts of like materials from his like personal life. And then we go to another room. So here it's a bit dark. We there's a piece called One Candle, which we cannot show uh, now.
This is a fragment of um, one of the first television programs that Nam Jung made um, for satellite television. It's called Good Morning Mr. Orwell and it was on TV uh, on the 1st of January 1984. So that's why he called it Good Morning Mr. Orwell. And what he wanted to do with satellite television was really connect people from all over the world, people living in, for instance, with this piece, living in New York and Paris and have live television. And he used a machine called, oh, this is really 1980s, I think. So he had musicians and artists performing um, for this program. And he did like live editing with his video synthesizer that he had built in the late 60s. So you see live from Paris. And some other artists were in New York. And um, that was something, you know, for us it's really like normal to see like on internet, YouTube, live TV, for us like Instagram at the moment. But at that moment, like 1980s, 84, that was really something really special. So. Oh, there's a, there's a question. Someone's asking, does Nakhon Pai have specific topic or teams he's always working with? Um, teams like collaborate people he was working uh, with? Yeah, yes. Topics or like topics in the, in the sense of like, uh, sub, like subject. Well, he yeah. worked with, I, he worked with many, many people, many different people. Um, like John Cage, for instance, Joseph Boyce, uh, Charlotte Mormon, and but he also had a team of people with whom he uh, worked. Uh, for instance, he had a, like a studio assistant, a person who, with whom he built a lot of his uh, works, John Hoffman, and John is the curator of the estate, and he was here for about two and a half weeks to to help us with the installation of, uh, of this exhibition. So he's very experienced and knows a lot about like how Nam Chung Paik wanted to, to make his shows. So it was great that we could work with him and with his yeah, knowledge and expertise. Yeah. So this, this room is called um, Technology and Participation, because like Nam Chung Paik worked a lot with new technology and he made this piece for instance in the mid, mid 70s and it's called Nixon TV. But at that time uh, Richard Nixon was on TV every evening to give statements, to give lectures and talks and he distorted the image with magnets. Well, then the question arises, you say, well, how do you pay for these, and how do you do it legally? And there are several ways that it can be done, incidentally, and that it is done legally. In the United States. So, and that was also something he did, for instance, with this piece, which is called Magnet uh, TV. If you're talking about really like old televisions, this is, this is a very old TV. And, um, as there's a, a magnet, a very strong magnet on top of it and um, the, the image on the television screen is distorted because of that, uh, that magnetic field. And it's also very nice to have a look like inside of, the, of this very old television. No, it will not break it, but we have to move the magnet like every two weeks or so, because otherwise the, um, yeah, 
it, it will harm, damage the, uh, the screen. Yes, we have to move it from time to time. That's, that's right. So maybe we can walk well, this a room which is about um, its collaboration with uh, Joseph Boyce. But I would like to walk to the next room, which is about the great Charlotte Mormon. And she was a, um, a cello player, really like classically trained. Um, but after she had met Nam Peik in um, 1964, she was really more into avant-garde music and really trying to break the boundaries of what music is. And they perform together very often. Well, actually, they very much like the idea of, of including like sex into classical music. Um, and Nam Tung Peik also made like something special for her, like a bra, a, a TV bra that she wore during her performances and a and TV glasses. They are here. And over there you can see like how it looked. Also a TV cello he made for her. And um, So we can go to the next room. So Nam Jung Paik was always interested to make like technology, to work with technology, but to make it more human and also to work with technology in a sort of humorous way. And in the early 60s, he developed, together with an engineer from uh, Japan, Mr. Juya Abe, this really great robot. It was during a time that Nam Jung Paik did a lot of performances, and he wanted to have a mechanical performer. So somebody or an object who could do the performance for him. So this crazy robot could walk, raise its hands, like speak. There was sound coming from its mouth. And I understood that it could even like shit and, and, and pee. So it was really like human, human kind of robot. And he made more of these robots out of like old radio, radios and old televisions. So we have two from a whole family. And they're called aunt and uncle. They're next to each other. So he made a whole family of, uh, of robots. And there's a question. Someone's asking what were the first uh, responses from art critics to his work? Well, I think like the very first responses, and then we're talking about early 60s. I think that Nam Jung Peik really worked for a very small audience. So they were like curious about his uh, work, but he was, his work was not so well known on a large scale. So I think he, he mainly worked for like a small group of other artists and um, yeah. So they were curious, but he did not yet have this enormous exposure as, as he has now or yet later on. Yeah. So the robots are here, and um, so here in this room, we have a piece called Homage to Stanley Brown. And this is also another like special piece for, for us, for the Stedelijk Museum. It's also in our collection. And Peg made this work especially for an exhibition that we had here, a group exhibition called the Luminous Image, a Luminose Beeld, which was, well, I remember it. It was in 84, I was a student uh, still, and it was one of the first big shows, really important shows of video art here in the Netherlands. It was really groundbreaking. 
And the curator who was working here in the museum at that time, Doreen Mignot, she invited Nam Chung Paik to make a new work for, uh, yeah, for this exhibition. And he was um, really an admirer of the work of um, Stanley Brown, the Dutch Suriname artist. So he wanted to make work which was an like homage to, uh, to Stanley Brown. And that's what the title of this, uh, of this piece is. So, and we see fragments of works that um, we also show in other rooms, like the Global Groove and a work by, um, about Morris Cunningham, the famous uh, choreographer. Um, so he was like recycling his own material all the time. Um, yeah, it's a great piece, and um, Nem Chupai gave it to the to the museum. He donated this uh, this work, um, yeah, out of appreciation for the for this long connection that uh, that he had with the Stedelijk Museum. And I think we're almost in the last last room, and it's it's a really it's a great piece. Um, it's called Sistine Chapel, and Nam Peg made this work for the German pavilion at the Venice Biennial. Maybe it's a bit strange that he like, exhibited his, his work in, uh, in the German pavilion, but because he had worked for so many years in, in Germany, they wanted, uh, the German uh, wanted to have him in, uh, in this pavilion. 1993 it was, and he called the work Sistine Chapel. So in a way, it, it's a bit like the Sistine Chapel you see in the Vatican, uh, but now with video images. And it's a summary of all his work he had made until then. So fragments of his earlier videotapes. Um, and it's, it's a great piece. We can walk in. Uh, So you see David Bowie, uh, Joseph Beuys, some more like abstract images. And yes, he made it with like more than 30 projections covering all the walls and the, the ceiling, like a Sistine Chapel. And with the help of um, the people from the estate, we could install it here in our Hall of Honor, the EMC cell, the biggest room of uh, our museum. This, uh, this really great work, which I think brings together like everything that he like, stands for and shows yeah, what a great artist he was. Well, thank you very much for watching the Stedelijk Museum live tour. Um, yeah, we will be back next week, Friday afternoon at, uh, at two o'clock with another exhibition uh, from the Stedelijk Museum. And well, I really hope to see you all again soon. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>